second Sunday of our Epiphany season. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
So Samuel went down, went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it to tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Renee, be seated. Let us say together selected verses from Psalm 139 found in your service leaflet. Together. Lord, Lord you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from so afar. You trace my journeys and my rest. Shun fornication. 
Every sin that a person commits is at the sign of the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus. 
excited about being found by Jesus, Philip immediately goes out and he finds Nathaniel to share with him the good news. Philip enthusiastically tells Nathaniel, we have found him who Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathaniel, uh, really as kind of a sarcastic put down, says, can anything good come out of Nazareth, for goodness sake? Nathaniel lived in Cana, about four miles down the road from Nazareth. Nazareth was uh, really kind of an out-of-the-way place, a little hometown that was not very significant as other cities or some other towns. Apparently, the city of Nazareth was sort of common, not well-known compared to those larger cities that were well-known, popular, and also had some status. <clears throat> Nazareth, big deal. <laughs> but Philip, not to be distracted or even argumentative, says, just come and see. Come and see. Philip invites Nathanael to find Jesus and to be found by Jesus. Philip takes Nathanael to a place to find Jesus. Philip has a desire for others to come and see. Come and see what is important in his life. Philip wants to share the good news that has been shared with him. Philip makes a personal one-on-one -on -one invitation, <coughs> one changed life inviting another. Now, there wasn't a big media campaign going on. There were no strategies and there wasn't a membership drive or some kind of philosophical persuasion, no slogan, no jingles, just a man sharing intimately and personally about his captured heart. Like a man's heart that's been captured by a woman, or a parent or a grandparent's heart captured by a young child, or like a heart being captured by the beauty of nature, like a beautiful sunset. Like my heart that was captured by those dear, sweet children in the village of Liberia, Africa. Like the disciples' hearts captured by the magnificence of Jesus. This is the very essence of evangelism, sharing hearts that have been captured by Jesus Christ, hearts that have been found by Jesus, saying, come and see. Come and see what he has done for me. Come and see what he can do for you. Come and see this Jesus of Nazareth. What good could come out of Nazareth? What good could come out of little old St. Philip? Our vestry and this congregation needs to ask some very challenging and maybe difficult questions. As a people who have been found by God, how are we following Jesus? As people who have had captured hearts by the love of God, how are we leading others to a place where they may find God and be found by God so they too may have their hearts captured by Jesus? We need to look deeply into our strengths and into our limitations and our challenges. We need to take a moment of a really a sober silence to realize God's plan for us, not our plans, and the work that God has set before us. We can also reflect, I think, on the accomplishments and the affirmations of the present time here at St. Philip, where we can say to others, come and see. I'm so proud of us in so many different ways I don't know about you, but it's easy for me to say, come and see St. Philip. 
as our ministries expand or become more efficient, we want to say, come and see. As our services become more glorious, including our music, we want to say, come and see. As our in-reach and especially our outreach programs touch more lives and touch them more completely and deeply, we want to say, come and see. In our preaching and teaching and spiritual formation, we want to say, come and see. There is work ahead as we work through the task of restoration and healing, vision, Christian formation, and growth. Your priest, our vestry, the other leadership roles of this parish and a number of members of our congregation are very capable, talented, and committed to leading this parish, this church, as a destination where one can find Jesus and can be found by Jesus. We are to follow the spirit of our namesake, St. Philip. St. Philip, by proactively seeking others out to invite them to come and see. Come and see the love and goodness of God that can be found in this place. When the thousands came hungry before Jesus, the Lord asked Philip, there you go again, he asked Philip to find him food. Now that must have been a daunting, challenging task for Philip to even think about. But the Lord is not asking us to draw only from our own resources, especially our limited resources. He offers us his own assurance of the help of the Holy Spirit, just like he did Philip, to accomplish mighty tasks for the glory of God and for the care of his people. What good can come out of St. Philip? Well, come and see. Jesus tells Nathaniel, you will see greater things than these. That is to say, you hadn't seen nothing yet. Or even the best is yet to come. May it truly be said so with us. May we truly live up to our namesake, St. Philip. Amen. 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 Let us now stand and say together the Nicene Creed.
The Nicene Creed can be found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. As we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. And for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. These are the prayers for the people found in your service. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Remembering especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican community, Phoebe, our bishop, and Father Terry, our priest, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Remembering especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and all the mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas. We pray for all who govern and hold the authority in the nations of the world. That, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Remembering especially Elena, Jane, the Graham family, Ray, Doug, Robin, the Mathis family, Larry, John Henry, Bill, the Slayton family, Janet, the Street family, the Walker family, Martha, the Zanella family. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Rio, that toe. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for licensed lay ministers. We pray for the West Tennessee Haiti Partnership Mission. We pray for the village mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for peace in Jerusalem. Yeah. We pray for peace among all nations. Amen. We pray for peace for our own nation. Amen. We pray for the protection and comfort of all those who serve this country in foreign and domestic lands, especially Trevor Holly, Rachel Miller, and Jacob Stevens. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by the Wilburn and Malone family in memory of Philip Charles Wilburn. Mm -hmm. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating their birthday especially Ray Harville. 
Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We continue to pray for the conflicts in the Middle East, especially between Israel and the Palestinians. for the country of Ukraine. We pray for those that might be suffering or that will suffer as a result of the current weather. Pray that the weathermen will be wrong. <laughs> Bishop, uh, Bishop Michael Curry, recently released from the hospital, that he will have a strong recovery. We also give thanks for all the blessings in this life. Amen. Amen. Accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Our confession can be found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 360. As we confess together, Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. Peace. Peace.
Of course, adjust that uh, to the weather. We have no idea, really. We do hope weathermen are wrong. <laughs> They're going to be at least half right. Uh, but uh, just stay tuned, and we'll let you all know about that healing service on Wednesday. It may we may still be frozen in. <clears throat> Let us continue to uh, be mindful of all of our uh, wonderful ministries. As I mentioned, even in the sermon today, it is uh, one of our strengths, I believe. Uh, maybe even our greatest strength is our outreach uh, ministries that we have. And uh, I'll, I'll revisit the importance of the discretionary fund uh, uh, because of the the holidays, and also I wrote a number of checks in January uh, for this uh, 24 year. Uh, we have depleted that fund, uh, and so I encourage you to continue to give to the discretionary fund generously. Uh, a very powerful ministry, indeed. In fact, I had some call the other day uh, uh, of a need and. I didn't have enough funds to, to really address that need, so we've uh, kind of down to the bottom. Our altar flower uh, sign-up sheet is on the bulletin board. We still have some uh, blank spaces there for people to fill in. Um, and I've been encouraged <laughs> to encourage you all to make sure that you pay for those. Uh, we sometimes we just forget, don't we? We sign up and then uh, uh, it doesn't get paid for. And our uh, treasurer, investor, are now beginning to be very mindful of that. So it, it, it might be a good idea as you, as you sign up, go ahead and uh, send your check in so you don't forget. Uh, but there's been sort of a hole in that uh, contribution <coughs> area. That's called a gentle nudge. <laughs> uh, last call for picking up the poinsettias. If you ordered a poinsettia, please uh, go in the hearth room. They're still lovely for the most part. And if, if there's one that's a little bit uh, shabby looking, we'll just grab one that looks better. Uh, but please do take those home because we'll have to get rid of them this week. We have a new adult education class uh, entitled Heaven and Earth, and it deals with the themes of Advent, Christmas, and the Epiphany season. Uh, it is uh, uh, as radical as the gospel is. Uh, Will Willimon is, is a uh, wonderful theologian, still living. In fact, this book is fresh off the press of this past year. I've had the privilege uh, and I know Dwight has too, studying under Will Willman. Uh, he's, a, he's a big, he, he's a big, uh, but man, his, uh, his study book uh, is, uh, and well, in fact, he says, uh, hold on to your hats. <laughs> uh, as he talks about uh, really the more radical part, and I don't mean radical politically, although I suppose it could be, but as radical as Jesus was, uh, as radical as the gospel is compared to our own culture. Very stimulating. Come and join us. A reminder that Bishop Sunday is January 28th. That's just a couple of weeks away. And what you need to know is that we're having one service and one service only, like we did last year. Uh, really, uh, for the benefit of the bishop, who usually does just come to one service, uh, that she's been coming to both at 8 and 10.30. But it would be better for her and probably a better showing for us if we had one service. So uh, on Bishop Sunday, the 28th, mark your calendars. Uh, for you all, it'd be easier than the 8 o'clock folks. Uh, but uh, we'll have that one service. If you've read your newsletters, and I hope that you do weekly on Thursdays, uh, I hope you've found a, 
a little interest article about our uh, red door in front. We now have uh, a medieval looking knocker uh, on that door. It has historical significance and also theological significance as uh, Jesus tells us knock and, and, uh, and he will open the door. So the red door itself and the knocker are symbols of not only hospitality, but a symbol of uh, sanctuary. Sanctuary from the world about us. So take a peek as you're walking out to our door knocker. Are there any other announcements that we might need to make this morning? Do we have any birthday celebrations? How about anniversary celebrations? Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive.
using Eucharistic Prayer C during our Epiphany season, found on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn.
Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen.
today and for all of those that we have prayed for. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep them in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Become what you have received. Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God, Heavenly Father, Father you have, have graciously accepted us as living members of your, your Son, Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you. With gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you for the rest of this Sabbath day, for your upcoming week during our great epiphany season, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.